gentlemen, please welcome Josh Silver. <laughs> Alright, alright. Woo! Woo! Alright. Thank you, everybody, so much for coming tonight. This is incredible. Um, special thanks to Paul and the TikTokers and everybody that helped to put this together. My name is Josh, and I'm a third year student here at LifeWest. And for the last two years, I've been studying functional neurology. And through my studies there, it's allowed me to get a unique perspective on chiropractic. One that mixes concepts of functional modern neurology with tenants in vitalistic philosophy to create a new way of seeing the nervous system. And I call it mechavitalism. Today we're going to get a little bit deeper into that. Let's get started. You guys all remember learning about action potentials back in cell physiology. Essentially the cell body of the neuron gets stimulated to a point that it reaches threshold and as it depolarizes it sends its axon potential, voltage-gated, shooting down to the end of its axon. It reaches the axon terminal and releases neurotransmitters, and the next neuron is stimulated. Well, depending upon their anatomical locations in our brain and their frequency of firing, they allow us to experience life. They let us feel our environment and then react to it. They let us remember things from our childhood, but also innovate new ideas for the future. They allow us to fall in love. Their patterns of activation become our personalities. Now, chiropractic is all about increasing communication in the body. And action potentials are communication within the nervous system. So the way I see it is the more action potentials you have, the healthier you are, because you're more connected. So I tell my patients that if they really want to be healthy, it's not going to be easy. They need to take action to maximize their potential by maximizing their action potentials. Come on. Josh Silver. So everybody go ahead and close your eyes. And we're going to put on a special pair of glasses that lets us see things a little differently. I want you to visualize a three-dimensional human body floating in space. And then go ahead and take off all the skin, the muscles, the organs, and the bones until the only thing remaining is a three-dimensional human nervous system. That's a brain with a brain stem and a cerebellum that extends into this long flowing spinal cord with thousands of nerves branching off. Keep your eyes closed. These glasses also allow us to see electrical activity as little yellow lights. And instantly, this system comes to life. Billions upon billions of these little yellow lights shooting up and down the system everywhere. Storm clouds of activation billowing in the cortex and torrents of light flowing from our frontal lobes down into our bodies. Go ahead and open your eyes. See, this is what I see every day when I'm working with my patients. This is what I'm trying to visualize. And then that way I'm kind of like the chiropractic Neo from the Matrix. <laughs> but this is ideal. This isn't what we normally see. Because people come to us subluxated. So let's just say they lose L5PRI. As that segment misaligns, immediately it undergoes fibrotic changes that glue it into place. Its motion will never be the same. The problem here is that it's surrounded by thousands upon thousands of mechanoreceptors that are dependent upon that motion for activation. So as it stops moving, they stop depolarizing. There's less electrical activity in that area, and the subluxation literally becomes less than light. I've dug up and decoded this word in neurophysiology, and it's called Diascasis. Diascasis states that a problem in one part of the nervous system will create problems in another part of the nervous system that's anatomically separate but functionally connected. Well, when you apply this law to subluxation, you understand that the spinal cord is anatomically separate from that vertebra but functionally connected and is also going to suffer adverse consequences as a result of subluxation. And the spinal cord loses some activation and it loses some light, and it dampens down and gets a little darker. Now, finally, transneural degeneration is a state resulting in damage or death of a neuron as a disruption of incoming input. So essentially, the brain is relying upon input from the spinal cord 
exactly the same way a tree is relying upon water from its roots. And so as a spinal cord starts to shrivel up, it starves the brain of that nourishing proprioception. The brain starts to fall into a state of transneural degeneration where it loses activation and its light quiets down to a distant murmur. So using the words we've just covered, I've come up with a sentence, subluxation through diasketic changes causes transneural degeneration in the cortex. And I think every chiropractor in the world needs to know this sentence because it adds scientific validity to the danger of subluxation using laws of neurophysiology. I mean, when we look at it through this scope, what other ailment in the entire human condition is there that can stifle the expression of the nervous system as ruthlessly as subluxation? So when people ask me, do subluxations kill? You're damn right they kill. So what do we do, chiropractors? Exactly what we've been taught, you seek and destroy. You blow up that segment. Any technique, it doesn't matter. Because as you do, you instantly restore it back to normal motion. And the beauty here is that its receptors around it start getting depolarized and activated, and that area starts growing bright. Well, this feeds forward to rehydrate the spinal cord, and that wakes up, and that feeds forward to rehydrate the brain, and it comes out of transneural degeneration, and these people finally wake up out of the subluxated fog they've been living in for so long. You know what's cool? This is only the beginning, because next, we go after their atlas, and we do it well, because we know that a subluxation here is so deleterious to the human body, and when corrected specifically, beautiful things happen. And so as you lay down that toggle, you instantly facilitate transmission between the brain and the body at its most pivotal connection, and the system bristles with excitement. Now, one of my heroes and mentors, Dr. James Chestnut, says we cannot live in a genetically incongruent environment with pathologic lifestyles and expect to be healthy. It's just not logical. I mean, we were supposed to be running around the forest eating twigs and berries, not sitting on your couch choking down some Taco Bell. I'm guilty. So, so what do we do? We teach our patients how to change their environment. First, we feed them foods that everybody needs, um, fresh, organic fruits and vegetables, none of that GMO crap. You want to give them grass-fed meat, none of that industrial junk. Um, Omega-3s and vitamin D, things that every single person needs but our modern diet is lacking. Because as you nourish the nervous system, its metabolic capacities as a whole improve, and it starts to shine bright like a diamond. <laughs> okay. Next, what you do is you empower them to move, to exercise, because that, again, is a vital component of the human system. Everybody needs it. And it doesn't have to be work. It can be fun. Just get outside and play. Run, hike, bike, swim. Do something. Find something you love to do. Because as you get them moving, you increase oxygen delivery to the nervous system. And that increases ATP production. That increases action potentials. And the system starts to become luminous. Now the last thing, and I think the most important, is you teach them to love themselves. Teach them to look in the mirror every single day and say, you're awesome, I love you. You wanna give them goals and affirmations? Tell them to go home and meditate and breathe. You want them to feel safe, loved, and appreciated. Because as you do this, electrical activity in the brain pinnacles to a point where it becomes almost blinding. It becomes this brilliant brain running at its maximum functional processing capabilities. Now some techniques call this tone, others call it adaptation. I call it enlightenment. And in a very peculiar but literal sense of the word, it's exactly what it is. A state of transcendent divine experience where your brain is overflowing with action potentials and primed for neuroplasticity. And when you get here, you feel incredible. You experience everything to its maximum, and you see life clearly for what it really is. That's my dream for humanity. That's mechavitalism. Thank you. <laughs>